Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and to another video. Today I'm going to give you a tour of my 12 months of birth flowers painting series. And this is a series I worked on for about a year, um, a while back, and I painted the birth flowers for every month of the year. And I made these into full length classes for my online school, The Watercolor Garden. But I've never actually done a YouTube video on just showing everybody all 12 of the paintings. So today that's what we're going to do. So if you'd like to see some botanical illustrations done in watercolor, then stay tuned. Okay, so here is a tour of my 12 months of birth flowers series. The first portrait is of Snowdrops, which is the birth flower for January. And this is a great class for learning how to paint white flowers on white paper. The second portrait is violets for February. And these violets uh, were really fun to paint. This is a more simplified uh, style of leaf for learning how to paint and starting out with botanical watercolor painting. And then uh, the violets, you can see there's some warm and cool tones. And I really do like to focus on warm and cool temperatures for creating shape and form with my botanical paintings. And all of these paintings are sort of structured around my three-step painting method, which is how I approach botanical painting so that it's simplified, less scary, and you can create paintings in less time. I have a very young baby boy and I do not have very much time at all, so this comes in handy a lot these days. And so the basic premise is just knowing what order of steps and techniques to use, which really helps and it also makes it a lot more enjoyable. So this is for March, the beautiful daffodil here with nice blue-green leaves and yellow flowers can be really hard to paint and not make look muddy. So um, in this class I show you how to underpaint and create something called botanical grey, which is a beautiful transparent grey that you can use for yellow flowers that doesn't make it look muddy and keeps that vibrancy. April is the sweet pea and here are my sweet peas and you can see there's lots of little details and veins and tendrils and then we also have um, some sort of bicolor blooms here with a really nice sort of pale, sort of pinky gray almost and um, beautiful dark center. So that's a really fun one to paint and great practice for leaves. And then for May, which is this month, we have Lily of the Valley, again, a white flower on white paper. So it is definitely possible with white flowers, you actually paint the shadows, not the white of the flower. The white that you're seeing here is this paper shining through. So um, that's something that I focus on a lot in this course for the Lily of the Valley. And then a nice sort of simple sweeping technique to create these beautiful parallel veined leaves. And then for June, uh, the birth flower is roses. I don't love painting traditional roses, so I chose to paint a wild rose for June. This is actually a free class that I have. Um, this is one of the series classes and this one is available for free um, online for people that want to try out my style of teaching. So that is linked below if you want to sign up to do a one hour free class and learn how to paint this beautiful wild rose. And you can see there's lots of color variation in the leaves, which is a trick and a technique I use for saving time and creating depth and interest in my paintings. And then you also learn how to create these sort of delicate soft pink colors which can be tricky at times and then um, how to quickly create a nice detailed looking center. So again link in the description below if you're interested in taking the wild rose class. In July is the beautiful delphinium. I did a bit of a bigger format for this painting and I really enjoyed painting this. It's so beautiful with the different purples and blues and I really tried to exaggerate that again with warm and cool colors and the color variation and going into uh, enough detail so this is looking botanically 
um, you know, correct or identifiable, but not so much that we're using masking fluid and spending hours and hours on each painting because um, I do not have time to do that, but I still want to create beautiful botanical portraits. So these leaves turned out really nice. I really like them. There's a certain technique I use as well for um, creating some contrast and drama with leaves. And um, a lot of that is just sort of exaggerating contrast and creating the shadow areas where things overlap and connect. And then it's a smaller portrait for the August uh, botanical portrait, which is poppies. Um, there, there are actually two birth flowers for each month, so it depends on what you pick. You could think it's gladiolas for August or poppies. So I chose poppies. And these are done really simply. This is actually only, this only took me half an hour to paint it, so it's like a 30 minute class. It's a shorter one. The leaves are done simply. There's some very, you know, delicate veining, um, but not a lot shown. And again, it's to do with this color variation. So tonal variation, which I talk about a lot, is um, like a cheat you can use to create botanical paintings in less time. You can see there's some tone shifts here as well, and it really creates that dimension and drama. So again, that's a big part about how I approach botanical painting. And September, um, excuse my burn, sorry, I just saw that on the camera. I burnt myself really badly on the kettle um, the other day or a week, so that is healing up. Um, this is morning glory, so sometimes people have a hard time uh, doing a front-on portrait of a trumpet-shaped flower, so we sort of learn how to do that, um, doing a darker center and creating some shadow. It actually doesn't look quite as trumpety on the camera just because it's a bit lighter. Um, but anyway, I show you how to create that. And again, another white flower. So you'll really get good at white flowers on white paper um, if that's something you're interested in. And then again, I'm using different tones and hues mixed together in these leaves to create interest and depth. October is the marigold and this was a really fun one to paint and sometimes this maroon color can be hard to achieve without being really washed out. Um, it can be disappointing to try and do that color on the first layer and then it doesn't look at all uh, like what it looks like in the palette on the paper. So um, in this one I really show you how to build up tone and vibrancy in color to create rich beautiful flowers like this one and then again some really nice simple leaves and this is all done on fluid brand 140 pound cold press paper so um, unlike a lot of botanical artists I did learn on hot press paper but I decided to do cold press paper because it's a bit more forgiving for washes so again if you're starting out um, it's less hard basically to learn on cold pressed and this paper here that these are all painted on is fluid brand watercolor painter by speedball it's not super expensive uh, my preferably expensive paper that I like to use is arches but that's a bit more costly so this is more middle of the road it also has a nice smooth finish for being cold pressed so it works really well for botanical portraits November is the peony and I had a lot of fun painting this one and uh, so there's a bud and then the big flower and this looks super time consuming and complicated. I'll bring it up a little closer to the camera but it's actually not at all hard to do and it didn't take me that long. I didn't use any masking fluid and so um, in this one we talk about negative painting and how we can create these really complex looking centers and shapes using that technique. And then lastly, we have uh, for December's project, the Hellebore. So Hellebore is a Christmas rose. It's less commonly known for a birth flower. Often it's either paper whites or poinsettia or um, even holly with like the flowers. Um, but this is a flower that blooms in the winter. And so I chose to do this one again, um, really showing how to get dark sort of glossy looking leaves and um, some different colors going on here with brown stems. And then again, I'm going to hold this up a bit closer. Um, another complex center 
that you can save a lot of time on not using any masking fluid and also adding in some markings to your flowers as well. So that's a really um, great sort of trick and technique to learn and also creating shape and form with contour marks and um, the direction of your brush strokes. So that one is the Hellebore. I'll just bring that back into focus. It's hard when I'm moving my, there we go, moving my paintings around. So those are my 12 months of birth flowers. So I hope you enjoyed the tour. If you want to see all of these and look at the pictures, they are on my website. So I'll leave that link as well below in the description. Um, and you can have a look at which uh, month they are, what they're called, if you want to look at the paintings in more detail. But that's it for today's video and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching this video to the end. If you did like it and you enjoyed the videos on my channel, then please do subscribe to my channel. It really helps me out to make new videos. And if you're interested in more uh, information on the 12 months of birth flowers series or learning how to paint portraits like that, then you can check out the link in the description below for the waitlist for when my watercolor garden school it opens for enrollment next as I open the school a few times a year to enroll new students and then you'll get information on when that happens and learning more about painting in this style. And I'll see you in the next one.